Hi, today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about my favorite app, Trello. Trello is a really great app that can help you stay organized throughout all aspects of your life. I use it for my personal calendar, for home management, meal planning, and event planning, just to name a few. But today I want to tell you how I use it as a paralegal. As a paralegal, it is my responsibility to keep track of deadlines and statuses of each case I'm working on. Trello helps me with this. Not only do I have the information at my fingertips at work, but I also have it on my cell phone so that I can access this up-to-date information anytime. The possibilities of what you can do with Trello are endless, and I'm just going to show you an example of the way it works for me. But first, let me show you the basics. Trello is made up of boards. This is a Trello board. Each board contains columns that are called lists. Here's a list. This is a list, and this is a list. Each list contains cards like this. There's many things you can do with a card. You can add information to it. You can add labels. You can add checklists, due dates. You can attach things, and then you, you can have power-ups, which is a whole another ball of wax. So for my job, this is the way I set up my Trello board. The first column or list contains a card for each case I'm responsible for. Each card contains a brief summary of the cases, including the case style and court information, contact information for our client, as well as opposing counsel. You can see here, this would be the case style here, and the type of case, I always put the date of incident, the name of our client, and their contact information, as well as the court case number and a style of the case, including the court that it is involved in. And then I always add a little bit of the court information here just so that I have it handy. I also add the opposing counsel's information, contact information. And if we have a records rep where we order deposition written questions or anything like that, I have that here. And I also put experts in here with their contact information just so that I have it handy. Um, I also, when I get a scheduling order or a docket control order, I'll add a checklist with these dates just so that we have them. Um, I have them handy so that I can just look at the case and see what's coming up. Um, just for that per that certain case and I don't have to go and look through the calendar to find those dates. I also do an other dates uh, checklist which also includes like uh, little uh, like discovery deadlines, depositions, that kind of thing that aren't on necessarily on the scheduling order. My next um, list contains my actual to-do list. And as you can see here um, at the top, I keep a case name template on each one just so that every case looks pretty much the same. I just keep this template so anytime I get a new case I just copy this template and start adding plugging in the information to the new card. I do the same thing with this one for the case uh, for the case template also but this is uh, my to-do list. Now for my to-do list I only have things that I need to do every day things that, I, that I'm responsible for, not that anybody else is responsible for, but what I'm responsible for that my attorney has given me to do for the case. I also will usually add just up here, a due date for the next thing that's coming due based on the, either the docket control order or a deposition or a notice of, uh, I mean, discovery or whatever. Um, I always put a due date just so that I know for that case, August 16th is the next thing I have something to do for it just so that I don't let anything fall through the cracks. Um, also, um, I have a, uh, I have labels on these cards. And this card, for instance, whenever I'm waiting on like an attorney to review something, or if I'm waiting for some records from somewhere that I've requested records for, or I'm waiting on a check to be able to be sent or whatever, I'll have uh, this label waiting on and then I'll put in the description what I'm waiting on just so that it doesn't fall through the cracks. And so I know like at a moment's glance, I have three different cases that I'm waiting on things for. 
Now, the thing I love about these checklists is when you've done everything in your checklist, it turns green and I love that. If I haven't finished it all, you can see right here that I have things to do in this case. So that's what my next column is. Then I have my due dates column. So anytime I get a docket control order like here where I have the uh, all the dates, not only do I stick it here, but I also make a card for each item that's on the docket control order. And I will put a label such as this is the opposing counsel's deadline. If it's our deadline, I'll put this one. And you can you can customize these to make them any way you want. Um, and so like trial mediation, it would be on here. So then what I do is I put that date here so I can see it. But then I also do a due date. So it's August 15th is plaintiff's discovery responses due to us. So I'll also do a due date here just so that I don't forget. And if there's any kind of change, like there was an original date um, of July 26th, but per the rule 11, we changed it to August 15th. So I always noted on here just so that I remember because I don't know about you, but I have a life and I have other things to remember too. So I can't remember every little minutia, minutia type of thing. So I put it here also. I, I double put everything so that I just don't forget. Um, so this shows that they have plaintiff's discovery responses due to us on August 15th. So when, as August 15th approaches, this actual due date here on the card, where you can see it here, it'll start turning yellow. And then if it passes August 15th and I haven't checked it off, because there's a little checkbox here, then it'll turn red so that I know that they did not send their discovery responses to us. So that's a really great way to use this Trello board. Not only that, but you can have a power up for a free, the free edition of Trello, you get one power up per board. And so for this board, I chose to use the power up of the calendar. So what it does is anytime you have due dates, it plugs it into a calendar, which looks like this. So all my dates are on calendar, on the calendar. I can have a calendar view as well. So I really love that about this uh, column here. So my next column um, is actually just kind of a basic column. I, it's just a note section and it's very, uh, it's not structured at all. And I just, anytime I need to remember something like firm related or, um, you know, like a pro doc thing, or like, for instance, this one right here, I was having issues with Adobe Acrobat and I had to research it. It took me half a day to research why it was doing that. And when I finally figured it out and found the fix, I went ahead and put my information in here so that the next time it, if it ever did that again, I could just come right here and see how I fixed it the first time so that I don't have to go and research it again and try and figure it out because you know how that goes. So um, the next column I have is for records requests. Now, anytime we have records requests for any kind of agency, I will go ahead and put the information here. Each, we, each one will have a card of its own and I'll put the information here and it pretty much just tells you how to do it. It gives you the information of uh, the forms that they need that you have to use, um, as or a sample possibly of what they want to it contain and also um, where you need to send it and the information. I also always try to add a link to their um, website where they talk about uh, information or records requests so that I can check at any time to see if um, if they've changed their process in any way or um, if um, there's any kind of change to a form or whatever. So I like to do that uh, with my records request, but I have a pretty lengthy uh, one and every time we get a new one and I have to research how do you order those records, I go ahead and make a card here so that the next time I have to order those records, I have it right at my fingertips. Um, so my next one is expert witnesses. And the way I have this card, I mean this column is I do it by subject. So like first I'll put what kind of an expert they are and then I'll put it in alphabetical order. 
And so for each card, I'll have their name, the expert's name, and their contact information, as well as a little bio so that I would have something to put in like to the disclosures or whatever uh, when I'm trying to uh, respond to disclosures or answer about what expert we're using. And then I usually will attach their CV um, and their fee schedule. And if they have a website, I'll attach that link also, just so that I have it right here handy and I uh, won't forget to use it um, or I won't have to look for that information all the time. Now, in the comments, generally not here because this is a sample board, but on my regular Trello board that I use, I also will write which case we've designated them in just so that um, for future reference, I can remember, hey, we used them in that case. They were really good, so let's use them in this case or whatever, whenever we get a new case. It's just a great starting point when you're looking for experts um, to go and look at the ones you've used before to kind of, it's kind of like a springboard. So I that's how I do that. My next um, column or list is my court contacts. And in this column, even though I do put like the phone number and stuff for the court on the first in the summary of my case, I always put uh, whatever case, whatever court we are working with on here. So this isn't a comprehensive list of all the Harris County District Courts or Montgomery County. It's just the ones that we actually have cases in currently. And so what I do is the reason I have it here is I'll put all the information like I have all of their you know, their clerks and coordinators and court reporters and all that. I also have a link to their local rules if they have any or procedures. And usually I like to, if, if I find out anything about the court, like, you know, they prefer email or they prefer this or that, or you have to have a letter like to leave your document, I'll put it here in the comments so that I just know, you know, what to do for each court because you want to keep the courts happy. So that's kind of what I do for there. And then I don't have to look it up every single time. My last, case, uh, my last column is my closed case list. And basically all I do is when a, when a case closes, like say this case is closed, I will just take this case and simply drag it over here to the closed case file, knowing that this is going to be closed. Now, I usually do not uh, take the mirror imaged uh, to-do list case, which like if this is this is plaintiff versus defendant and this plaintiff versus, it's the same case, like I have a case summary and then I have a to-do list for them. Generally, I will just simply archive this one because I'm not gonna probably need to know, you know, everything I did for that case um, once the case is closed. So I'll just archive it. And if I ever do need to go to it, I can always like research it. You can search your archive documents or archive cards. So that's kind of what I do with that. Um, so um, anyway, this is just a very short, quick video to just kind of give you an idea of how I use Trello. Um, it's the, It can be done many different ways. This way just happens to work for me. Um, so I'm hoping this just gives you an idea of how you could use Trello or a, a similar app. And if you've enjoyed this video, it's my very first one. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and you hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm going to be doing many more Trello videos showing you different ways I use it um, to make my personal life better and my family life better and my home better. Um, but I'm also going to have other other videos that show uh, that give you ideas, too. So not just for Trello. So um, I would love for you to make a comment on um, ideas that you may have to use Trello as well. I'd love to hear your ideas. So I hope this helped. Bye bye.